Lesson 7 Defeat of the Assyrians Sabbath Afternoon February 6 The rise and fall of the Assyrian Empire is rich in lessons for the nations of Earth today. Inspiration has likened the glory of Assyria at the height of her prosperity to a noble tree in the Garden of God towering above the surrounding trees. The Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches and with a shadowing shroud and of an high stature, and his top was among the thick boughs. Under his shadow dwelt all great nations. Thus was he fair in his greatness in the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him, the fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. All the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. Ezekiel chapter 31 verses 3 to 9. But the rulers of Assyria, instead of using their unusual blessings for the benefit of mankind, became the scourge of many lands. Merciless, with no thought of God or their fellow men, they pursued the fixed policy of causing all nations to acknowledge the supremacy of the gods of Nineveh, whom they exalted above the Most High. God had sent Jonah to them with a message of warning, and for a season they humbled themselves before the Lord of hosts and sought forgiveness. But soon they turned again to idol worship and to the conquest of the world. Prophets and Kings, pages 362. And 363. The power of God has not decreased. His power, I saw, would be just as freely bestowed now as formerly. It is the church of God that have lost their faith to claim, their energy to wrestle, as did Jacob crying, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Enduring faith has been dying away. It must be revived in the hearts of God's people. There must be a claiming of the blessings of God. Faith, living faith, always bears upward to God and glory. Unbelief, downward to darkness and death. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, page 144. To the omnipotence of the King of Kings, our covenant-keeping God unites the gentleness and care of the tender shepherd. His power is absolute, and it is the pledge of the sure fulfillment of His promises to all who trust in Him. He has means for the removal of every difficulty that those who serve Him and respect the means He employs may be sustained. His love is as far above all other love as the heavens are above the earth. He watches over His children with a love that is measureless and everlasting. In the darkest days, when appearances seem most forbidding, have faith in God. He is working out His will, doing all things well in behalf of His people. The strength of those who love and serve Him will be renewed day by day. The Ministry of Healing, pages 481 and 482. Sunday, February 7. Strings Attached Hezekiah, in the earlier years of his reign, had continued to pay tribute to Assyria in harmony with the agreement entered into by Ahaz. Meanwhile, the king had taken counsel with his princes and his mighty men and had done everything possible for the defense of his kingdom. He had made sure of a bountiful supply of water within the walls of Jerusalem, while without the city there should be a scarcity. Also, he strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people. Second Chronicles chapter 32 verses 3, 5, and 6. Nothing had been left undone that could be done in preparation for a siege. Prophets and Kings, pages 350 and 351. In a time of grave national peril, when the hosts of Assyria were invading the land of Judah and it seemed as if nothing could save Jerusalem from utter destruction, 
Hezekiah rallied the forces of his realm to resist with unfailing courage their heathen oppressors and to trust in the power of Jehovah to deliver. Be strong and courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, Hezekiah exhorted the men of Judah. For there be more with us than with them. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 7 and 8. Prophets and Kings, page 349. The Lord knows that if we look to man and trust to man, we are leaning on an arm of flesh. He invites our confidence. There is no limit to his power. Think of the Lord Jesus and his merits and his love, but do not seek to find the defects and dwell upon the mistakes that others have made. Call to your mind the things worthy of your recognition and your praise, and if you are sharp to discern errors in others, be more sharp to recognize the good and praise the good. You may, if you criticize yourself, find things just as objectionable as that which you see in others. Then let us work constantly to strengthen one another in the most holy faith. This Day with God, page 300. Each of us will have hard battles to fight with self, and these combats will not become fewer. But if we are constantly growing in Christian experience, if we continue to look to Jesus in faith, Strength will be given us for every emergency. All the powers and faculties of a regenerated nature must be brought into constant daily exercise. Every day we shall have occasion to crucify self, to war against inclination and a perverse temperament that would draw the will in a wrong direction. The repose and triumph of victory are not yet ours, except as we by faith enter into the victory that Christ has gained for us. Reflecting Christ, page 108. Monday, February 8. Propaganda. The Assyrian officers, sure of the strength of their disciplined forces, arranged for a conference with the chief men of Judah, during which they insolently demanded the surrender of the city. This demand was accompanied by blasphemous revilings against the God of the Hebrews. Because of the weakness and apostasy of Israel and Judah, the name of God was no longer feared among the nations, but had become a subject for continual reproach. Rebshakeh lifted his voice and said, Hear ye the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Prophets and Kings, pages 352 and 353. When we are burdened, when we are pressed with temptation, when the feelings and desires of the natural heart are contending for the victory, we should offer up fervent, importunate prayer to our Heavenly Father in the name of Christ, and this will bring Jesus to our help, so that through His all-powerful and efficacious name we may gain the victory and banish Satan from our side. There is help for us only in God. We should not flatter ourselves that we have any strength and wisdom of our own. For our strength is weakness, our judgment, foolishness. Christ conquered the foe in our behalf because he pitied our weakness and knew that we would be overcome and would perish if he did not come to our help. He clothed his divinity with humanity and thus was qualified to reach man with his human arm while with his divine arm he grasped the throne of the infinite. The merits of Christ elevate and ennoble humanity, and through the name and grace of Christ, it is possible for man to overcome the degradation caused by the fall and through the exalted divine nature of Christ to be linked to the infinite. That I may know him, page 269. If our faith is fixed upon God through Christ, it will prove as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered. It is true that disappointments will come, tribulation we must expect, 
but we are to commit everything, great and small, to God. He does not become perplexed by the multiplicity of our grievances, nor overpowered by the weight of our burdens. His watch care extends to every household and encircles every individual. He is concerned in all our business and our sorrows. He marks every tear. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. All the afflictions and trials that befall us here are permitted to work out His purposes of love toward us that we might be partakers of His holiness and thus become participants in that fullness of joy which is found in His presence. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 742. Tuesday, February 9. Shaken, but not forsaken. The land of Judah had been laid waste by the army of occupation, but God had promised to provide miraculously for the needs of the people. To Hezekiah came the message, This shall be a sign unto thee, ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same. And in the third year sow ye, and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 29 to 34. That very night, deliverance came. Prophets and Kings pages 360 and 361. The faith that strengthened Habakkuk and all the holy and the just in those days of deep trial was the same faith that sustains God's people today. In the darkest hours, under circumstances the most forbidding, the Christian believer may keep his soul stayed upon the source of all light and power. Day by day, through faith in God, his hope and courage may be renewed. The just shall live by his faith. In the service of God, there need be no despondency, no wavering, no fear. The Lord will more than fulfill the highest expectations of those who put their trust in him. He will give them the wisdom their very necessities demand. We must cherish and cultivate the faith of which prophets and apostles have testified, the faith that lays hold on the promises of God and waits for deliverance in his appointed time and way. The sure word of prophecy will meet its final fulfillment in the glorious advent of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as King of kings and Lord of lords. The time of waiting may seem long. The soul may be oppressed by discouraging circumstances. Many in whom confidence has been placed may fall by the way. But with the prophet who endeavored to encourage Judah in a time of unparalleled apostasy, let us confidently declare... The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. Prophets and Kings, pages 386 and 388. When we take into our hands the management of things with which we have to do and depend upon our own wisdom for success, we are taking a burden which God has not given us and are trying to bear it without his aid. We are taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to God and thus are really putting ourselves in His place. But when we really believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we shall cease to worry about the future. We shall trust God as a child trusts a loving parent. Then our troubles and torments will disappear, for our will is swallowed up in the will of God. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, pages 100 and 101. Wednesday, February 10. The rest of the story. As God's messengers, angels go forth like the appearance of a flash of lightning, 
Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 14, so dazzling their glory and so swift their flight. The angel that appeared at the Savior's tomb, his countenance like lightning and his raiment white as snow, caused the keepers for fear of him to quake, and they became as dead men. Matthew chapter 28 verses 3 and 4. When Sennacherib the haughty Assyrian reproached and blasphemed God and threatened Israel with destruction, it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. There were cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and captains from the army of Sennacherib. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. 2 Kings chapter 19 verse 35 and 2 Chronicles chapter 32 verse 21. The Great Controversy, page 512. Tidings of this terrible judgment upon the army that had been sent to take Jerusalem soon reached Sennacherib, who was still guarding the approach to Judea from Egypt. Stricken with fear, the Assyrian king hasted to depart, but he had not long to reign. In harmony with the prophecy that had been uttered concerning his sudden end, he was assassinated by those of his own home, and Eser Hadon, his son, reigned in his stead. Isaiah chapter 37, verse 38. The God of the Hebrews had prevailed over the proud Assyrian. The honor of Jehovah was vindicated in the eyes of the surrounding nations. In Jerusalem, the hearts of the people were filled with holy joy. Their earnest entreaties for deliverance had been mingled with confession of sin and with many tears. In their great need, they had trusted wholly in the power of God to save, and He had not failed them. Now the temple courts resounded with songs of solemn praise. Prophets and Kings, pages 361 and 362. Often the Christian life is beset with dangers and duty seems hard to perform. The imagination pictures impending ruin before and bondage and death behind. Yet the voice of God speaks clearly. Go forward. Let us obey the command, even though our sight cannot penetrate the darkness. The obstacles that hinder our progress will never disappear before a halting, doubting spirit. Those who defer obedience till every uncertainty disappears and there remains no risk of failure or defeat will never obey. Faith looks beyond the difficulties and lays hold of the unseen, even omnipotence, therefore it cannot be baffled. Faith is the clasping of the hand of Christ in every emergency. The worker for God needs strong faith. Appearances may seem forbidding, but in the darkest hour there is light beyond. The strength of those who in faith love and serve God will be renewed day by day. The understanding of the infinite is placed at their service, that in carrying out His purposes they may not err. Let these workers hold the beginning of their confidence firm unto the end, remembering that the light of God's truth is to shine amid the darkness that enshrouds our world. Gospel Workers, page 262. Thursday, February 11. In Sickness and in Wealth. The visit of these messengers from the ruler of a faraway land gave Hezekiah an opportunity to extol the living God. How easy it would have been for him to tell them of God, the upholder of all created things, through whose favor his own life had been spared when all other hope had fled. What momentous transformations might have taken place had these seekers after truth from the plains of Chaldea been led to acknowledge the supreme sovereignty of the living God? But pride and vanity took possession of Hezekiah's heart, and in self-exaltation he laid open to covetous eyes the treasures with which God had enriched his people. The king showed them the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold, and the spices and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Isaiah chapter 39, verse 2. 
Not to glorify God did he do this, but to exalt himself in the eyes of the foreign princes. He did not stop to consider that these men were representatives of a powerful nation that had not the fear nor the love of God in their hearts, and that it was imprudent to make them his confidence concerning the temporal riches of the nation. Prophets and Kings, pages 344 to 346. The story of Hezekiah's failure to prove true to his trust is fraught with an important lesson for all. Far more than we do, we need to speak of the precious chapters in our experience of the mercy and loving kindness of God, of the matchless depths of the Savior's love. When mind and heart are filled with the love of God, it will not be difficult to impart that which enters into the spiritual life. Great thoughts, noble aspirations, clear perceptions of truth, unselfish purposes, yearnings for piety and holiness will find expression in words that reveal the character of the heart treasure. What have your friends and acquaintances seen in your house? Are you, instead of revealing the treasures of the grace of Christ, displaying those things that will perish with the using? Or do you, to those with whom you are brought in contact, communicate some new thought of Christ's character and work? Oh, that those for whom God has done marvelous things would show forth His praises and tell of His mighty works. But how often those for whom God works are like Hezekiah, forgetful of the giver of all their blessings. Conflict and Courage, page 241. For further reading, Sons and Daughters of God, He is near to all who call upon Him page 19. And, reflecting Christ, Jesus willed us peace, page 278.